Hello, this video is for STAT 110, Module 1, Part 6, and will include a discussion of the gender discrimination case study. Okay, let's go ahead and get started then. The data for this example comes from a court case titled Cooper versus the University of Texas at Dallas. And what we have here is a potential gender discrimination case. So we have several divisions within the college, arts and humanities, human development, management, natural sciences, etc. We have information about the proportion of females in the job market. So here for arts and humanities, and that's the one we're going to be working with, we can see that we have about 38.3% of the individuals in the job market are females. Over the time period that we are looking at, we had a total of 48 hires, and 14 of those 48 were females. So we're going to build a reference distribution for what it would look like if there was no gender discrimination taking place. We're going to take this information here that's highlighted in yellow and compare that against that reference distribution. So that's the process that we use to determine whether or not we have enough statistical evidence to suggest gender discrimination would be taking place. Okay, so let's get started building our simulation model. The number of hires in the Arts and Humanities division is 48. The proportion or chance of a female being hired under a situation of no gender discrimination is going to be that 38.3%. Now you might say, well, why isn't that 50%? The reason we're not using 50% here is because during this time, which was in the early 80s, only 38.3% of the individuals available in the job market were female. So not 50%, but 38.3%. Today, that number is probably going to be different. It's probably going to be higher. It's probably going to be higher to 50%. However, there are some areas, like the natural sciences, where the proportion of females is going to be way under that 50%. Okay, so our expected value is just going to be the number of trials, 48, times that 38.3%, which is going to be about 18. So they should have had about 18 women hired. How many did they actually hire? It was 14. So the University of Texas here is a little bit under what they should have been hiring. Not a lot, 18 against 14 here. Here's what the reference distribution setup is going to look like. Again, we are going to be mimicking a no discrimination situation here. My expected number should be about 18. My number line is going to go from 0 up to 48. And I am 38.3% of the way up that number line for my no discrimination situation. The left-hand side here is going to be discrimination against females. So if I don't hire any females, then that's certainly going to be discrimination against females. If I hire all females, then that's going to be discrimination against males. The question of interest here is whether or not I have discrimination against females. So the side that I care about is only going to be the left side of this distribution. So we'll talk more about that down below. OK, obtaining the reference distribution. My two outcomes is going to be that a female was hired or a male was hired. My proportion here is going to be the 38.3%. Again, that 38.3% or this P, what goes in the P box here is a probability, and that is for the success. The sample size is going to be 48. So the two, the success is a female being hired. Fail, um, a failure, I guess, here would be a male being hired. So again, that's just my two labels here. Probability of success, so that goes along with the chance of a female being hired, would be the 38.3%. Sample size is going to be 48. I'm going to want to select count under my drop-down box here. This is what that looks like. It uh, looks like I got 500 collected. Statistics, so let's drop over into the binomial simulation and just show you what that looks like. So here again, I got female hired, male hired. My proportion 
I'm going to select count here. I can turn my animation off. And it looks like I had 500, so I just clicked the 100 box 500 to, uh, five times here. Okay, so that would be my reference distribution that I would be basing my cutoff rule off of. Couple questions here. It looks like I got five questions for you to answer, so go ahead and hit pause. Try to answer those five questions and then come back. Okay, let's go through these real quickly. What is the lowest value? The lowest possible value is going to be, oh, lowest value from these 500. That looks like it's going to be 10. The lowest possible value is going to be zero here. But the lowest value that I got from my simulation here was 10. So again, this is 10 females hired out of 48, I guess it was. And this reference distribution was obtained under what it would look like if there was no gender discrimination taking place. So if I add one additional dot, is it possible to get a value less than 10? Sure it is. In fact, anything is possible between the 0 and the 48. Question 3 is asking about whether or not that's likely, and it's certainly not likely to get a value down here. Remember, the edge values are unlikely, and things become more and more unlikely the further I go down. Values that are likely are values around the expected quantity, which here is 18. Number four is pretty straightforward, and number five, these dots were generated under a situation of no gender discrimination. Okay, let's apply the outlier rule then. So I'm going to start, just kind of start guessing at values here. So let's go ahead and start at nine. Well, I'll start at nine here. I'm not gonna have any values that are at nine or below. So nine is too conservative of a cutoff. Okay, remember, we want about 5% of the dots. We want to identify the bottom 5% here. Why am I using the bottom 5%? Again, because if I don't have any females being hired, that's going to be gender discrimination against females. And that was the question that we're trying to answer. If we were worried about gender discrimination against males, it would be the upside of this distribution. So when I'm asking for the cutoff rule here, I'm going to want to be selecting the left tail because the left tail indicates that I have gender discrimination against females. It's not because my study outcome is on the left side. So that's a common misconception that students have. I expect 18. My study outcome was 14. So I must be using the left side of the distribution. That is not a correct that's not correct. The reason I'm using the left side is because the left side indicates that I have gender discrimination against females. So I just play around with putting a different value here in that X box. If I put 12 in there, so I did up here in the table, I guess, I started with nine, that's too conservative. 10 is not much better, that's still very conservative. If we jump up to 12, I can see that I get 3.4% of the dots at 12 or below. If I keep moving up to 13, 13 is going to give me about 8.4% of the dots. So if I try 13 in my box, I'm going to get 8.4% of my dots. And that's a little bit too high. So remember, we want to try to stick to that 5% or a little bit under 5% if we can. If we increase the number of statistics a bunch, so if I just get many, 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 that's going to give me a better idea of what's going on in the tails of this distribution. You can see that that pattern is kind of smoothed out more than with the 500. So what I mean by that is when we had the 500, I kind of had a dip in here. That's just an anomaly of the 500 samples that I got. But when I get lots and lots of them, those dips tend to just kind of go away and I get a fairly smooth pattern here. So 12 is going to be my cutoff value. So I'm going to divide, decide that 12 
is the point where I decide I have unlikely values versus likely values. So again, 12 or anything less than 12 is going to be an unlikely outcome under a no discrimination situation. Values 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, et cetera, are going to be likely values under a no discrimination situation. So the outlier rule, again, is trying to separate the unlikely outcomes from the likely outcomes. And then we simply put our study outcome down in the graph and figure out whether or not that's an outlier or whether or not that's unlikely. If it is unlikely, if it's below this cutoff value, then I'm going to say I have discrimination against females. So I'll go ahead and hit, go ahead and hit pause here again. We got uh, four more questions for you to answer. Okay, a little bit about these questions. Would 14 be considered an outlier? No, it's not. It does not meet that threshold past that value of 12 there. My reference distribution up here told me that 12 was my appropriate cutoff. 14 is not an outlier. Is there enough evidence? Statistically speaking now, so this is using the reference distribution and the outlier rule, to suggest gender discrimination was taking place against females in the division of humanities arts and humanities at the University of Texas at Dallas? The answer to that is no, we do not have enough evidence. Again, it's not meeting our definition of an unlikely outcome under a no discrimination situation. I realize that it's less than 18, but it's not unlikely. So that's what question eight is about. If we're just at 18 or a little bit under 18, that's not enough evidence for discrimination. We got to be substantially under 18, or it's got to be an unusual outcome. At least that's what we use if we're trying to speak statistically here. So what happens when we put 14 in the box? So I think I asked you this before on one of the early set of notes, or maybe on a homework assignment. What happens when 14 goes in the box? So 14 is actually my study outcome. So what I'm doing here is just trying to figure out how unlikely my study outcome is. This really isn't trying to figure out what an outlier rule is, or a cutoff value is, excuse me, but I'm just gonna put my study outcome in here. So what this is saying is that 14 sits in the bottom 12% of the distribution, or 11.96% of the distribution. Does 14 sit in the bottom 5% of the distribution? No, it does not. It sits in the bottom 11.96% of the distribution. So again, if I have a no discrimination situation, I have a 12% chance of finding or getting 14 or less females being hired in this situation. And again, that's not that unlikely. We do not consider that to be statistically unusual. Okay, that does it then for Module 1, Part 6, the Gender Discrimination Case Study. Thank you.